how to never worry about money and retire early. Recently, I've been planning to buy my first house, hence why I moved back home so I can save up some money for my first down payment. Yeah, this shit's frightening. Honestly, I am terrified for my life. I have never done anything this big before, and it's fucking crazy. I've been renting apartments for the past three years, I'd say, and I never really thought about investing into the future because I was just like, I wanna live in the moment. But I figure since COVID-19 is happening, there's an economic recession, and you know, you never know, like YouTube could disappear tomorrow and my job is just kaput. I thought it might be a good idea to plan for my future financially. Now listen, before I go into things I've learned about making money and retiring early, I just wanna say that there's this really fucked up image in the United States where success looks like this. Get a home, you have a picturesque family, living in a suburban life and the grass is fucking green. Then you hang out with the cool moms and dads because you made it, your kids are going to private school. You're able to afford everything. Money is never a problem and you have five cars. And I feel like this level of success is really appealing to me. Like, <laughs> I want to do that. But at the same time, it's just so dark and superficial where I don't even know if that's the level of success I'm looking for. So trust me, as I'm making a whole entire video about how to make money, I'm well aware that happiness does not equal financial freedom. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure it's better crying in a Bentley than a Honda, but at the same time, like, I don't think it's necessary to be happy if that's the goal. Honestly, if it were up to me, I'd keep renting apartments for my entire life so I could just make videos and work on my business. And I wouldn't give a shit about a house. But as a young person, I know it's important to prepare for the future. With that being said, I've been researching a ton about how to create a great financial future, and I want to share the top three things I've learned in the span of my week research. So yeah, don't expect a Wikipedia version about how to make money and get rich, but expect a rundown Gen Z Walmart version of that. Let's get started. I'm also redecorating my room as we speak, so... I'm actually so excited when I get my first house because I can finally hang pictures on my walls without having to worry about the fucking HOA yelling at me. All right, first thing I've learned about making money is to make sure you pick a anti-fragile income source. Now you might be wondering, Jade, what the fuck is anti-fragile income source? So the word anti-fragile basically means the more pressure you put on something, the stronger it gets. An example of fragile is this picture frame. If I literally smashed it on the ground and put pressure on this, it would break and shatter. But an example of anti-fragile is like a diamond. If you put pressure on a diamond, it gets brighter and stronger. So basically when you're in an economic recession from what I've learned it's really important to pick income sources that when the world is getting into more turmoil and more stress, your business or income source grows. All right, so an example of this in action, because I know that's really confusing and arbitrary, is what I've been doing in my work or what kind of turns the lights on recently is way different than what turned the lights on a year ago. I am the founder of a marketing agency called X8 Media. We create marketing strategies for brands, but last year we had a way different clientele than this year. You know, last year I would say we worked with all sorts of startups, food brands, apparel, a lot of e-commerce, and I was doing social media strategy for them and they'd pay me every month. But it was great. It was all good and dandy until COVID. COVID basically wiped out a lot of our clientele that we were working with and we had to pivot. So I was really stressed earlier this year because I realized my income source is very fragile and I have people to pay, but no money to pay them. So what did I do? So I noticed that in-person businesses were not going to grow during COVID. So I saw that businesses that were growing were companies in technology, in telecommunications, and healthcare. So I saw that and I was like, okay, how can I take my service and pivot it to this audience and make sure my clients are thriving and growing so they can obviously afford to pay the services in my business? And I did that. And now X8 Media it works with more tech companies than ever. So I really do think that anti-fragile for me was just shifting my business to a more growing industry, but for you, it can look completely different. So for example, say you work in retail and you're like, shoot, people aren't going in person anymore. How can I take the store and make it grow online. So then you start to build a YouTube channel and social media presence for that brand that you're working for and be like a marketer for that company. Or if you're a little bit more resistant on starting a business, maybe you can join a company that is growing and build the skills you need in order to grow with that brand. So to recap, my recommendation is to look at the world and be like, what industries or jobs that are currently getting more stress and growing from it? There's so many ways to take your current skills and apply it to a new industry, but it requires you to have that anti-fragile mentality. Shout out to my dad for teaching me this. That was actually the main thing I've learned from my entire uh, childhood. Guys, this art wall is coming together. Let's just talk about debt for a second. So the second thing I've learned is to decrease your debt and pay things on time. Now, as obvious as this sounds, you're like, Jay, what the fuck, I already know this. I'm not really perfect at it and I don't think anyone else is. So the key with 
Linda is this weird system gives you the amount of money you're able to take a loan and say it's $10,000, right? You can take that money out as long as you pay back to that $10,000 in time. And it's tricky, it's tricky. Like for me, you know, I took out a loan at $5,000 because I was a little bit short on paying my taxes in 2019. And I was negative $5,000 for a couple of months. And that compounding interest whenever you take out loans or debt can be frightening. I think at one point I was like, okay, how can I fix the situation? Cause I don't want to have negative $5,000 forever. So this is how I paid it off. First with any money problem, you can either spend less or make more. I know that's so obvious, but like when you think about it, it's, it comes down to that. You are either able to generate more revenue so you can pay off the bill or just live be below your means and pay off that debt. When it came down to spending less for me, I cut off the following things. I stopped going to Starbucks every day. Now I'm not perfect. I went to Starbucks today, but it's now only once a week. <laughs> I stopped spending money at SoulCycle, like which is an expensive ass LA gym. I just went to the regular gym. I also stopped spending money on excessive amounts of food and just started cooking more. Like, you know how much money I spent on Postmates? It was sickening, like not in a good way. It sounds crazy, but those three things over the course of three months saved me $4,000. And if I spent that $4,000 on those three things, then I wouldn't have money to pay off my debt. Although I'm not perfect and I still spend money on goods and products that don't make sense, which I'll go into, that right there was an improvement I was very proud of. Now let's talk about making more. I think in 2019, it was really tough just because I was working for like my first year out of school, working on my business, and I just wasn't really sure what the fuck to do. Like I knew my value and I could close like bigger brand deal projects and work with more brands, but like I think I was just lost in myself, like any 18, 17 year old. So honestly, when it came to making more money, I really just took on brand deals for the first time. I used to be such an asshole when it came to brand deals. I was like, I'm too good for this shit. But I got my first brand deal last year with a company called Dot Site, and it's a domain website where I actually use their Dot Site websites, and it was great. Like I got, I think my first two thousand dollar check in order to pay off that debt because with brand deals, the thing is you don't have to spend as much because it's you know content on your feed versus you know with my marketing agency stuff, I would have very high expenses, paying my team, paying taxes, equipment. Like there was just a lot more spend and less profit margin. So although I'd be making more money technically with getting paid by brands for consulting, I would actually lose more. So brand deals really did help me actually stay more afloat and uh, get my money things on track. So that's how I overcame that debt and I'm now on to my next debt. <laughs> Life never stops, man. So now we arrived to the third and final thing I've learned about retiring early slash I don't know, money shit. Honestly, guys, I'm extremely uncomfortable when it comes to talking about money, but I don't want it to be that way forever. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video just because I'm extremely uncomfortable, but please like this video if you do enjoy it, just because it lets me know that you like it. And also it does really help the YouTube algorithm out and help me support myself with making more videos in the future. Seriously, when I come to think about it, I'd be nothing without you guys. You have seen me ever since I was like 15 or 16 make videos on this channel. And then like, if you were an OG subscriber at nine years old you know that I was making like so many videos when I was a kid but you've seen me grow and thank you so much for following this journey I guess the last thing I want to leave off with is the third way to have a financial future which is buying a house slash investing and compounding growth where should we put Steve Jobs <laughs> I've been spending rent to apartments for the past like three years. I've been spending, you know, one to two K a month for every apartment I've lived in. And buying a house for me makes just fundamentally sense because no matter what, you're gonna spend that money anyways on where you live. So why not spend, you know, one to two K a month, but then actually at the end of it, have a tangible asset you own. I think it's important to have something where the more you invest in it, the more you grow financially and as a person, right? Cause in America, this weird number game, the way it works is the more physical assets you have, the more you are likely to get a loan or your credit score goes up. So the system does in a fucked up way reward you for the more things you have, which I don't really ethically agree with. But I think for me, I really want to take care of my family and make sure they're not worried about money. So having a house for me is just one step into making sure I can take care of myself and the people around me. If you're curious to know how I'm trying to buy this house, essentially, I want to put 20% down for my first house. I want to buy this house. It's $350,000, but we'll see if it's still on the market in like a year, of course. But the idea for me is I just want to get a house that will grow and has the highest investment chance. So I'm not looking for a luxury home. I'm not even looking for a big home, just a home. And the idea is I want to put 20% down and every month I'll have renters into the house and I'll live in like the next bedroom. So that's kind of my goal in the next one or two years. And we'll see if I actually make it because it is kind of just scary to commit to something for 30 freaking years, like a mortgage, which is what you pay after your down payment. It's typically 30 years. <laughs> 
So I've never done that before and it definitely is scary to me. Now for you guys, since you're watching this video and say you don't have 20% down for a $350,000 home, you can actually file for an FHA loan, which what I've learned allows you to put as little as 3.5%. So say you have a $350,000 home, 3.5% of that is $12,000. Now, if you wanted to buy that house at that down payment in you know two years, you would only have to be saving up $500 a month. So in two years, you could get that $350,000 home, which I never knew. I feel like so many financial advisors make it so freaking complicated and I was super intimidated. But if you save $500 a month, you get $12,000 in two years, you could get that house. Now, of course, with a 3.5% loan, there's highest interest rates, but it just shows you that shit is possible. And no one really laid it out to me like that. I think a lot of the things I've seen on social media is make money now, have a business that pops the fuck off and you'll be cruising. But I think knowing more about money allows me to have a big long-term goal, but also create a plan in order to hit that goal on a daily basis. Sometimes I can get really overwhelmed about thinking about the future, but if I give myself time and every month I do this small goal, over time I'll be able to achieve it. I'm on this journey right now to become a first time home buyer, but uh... I'm so fucking scared, okay? It's not that easy. Like, I know it's easy as saving, you know, a couple hundred or a thousand dollars a month, but, uh... <laughs> I'm still nervous, yo. So look at this art wall, guys. We finished this after me ranting about money. I just want to leave off this video by saying you don't have to follow these three steps. Honestly, I'm struggling to follow the three steps I'm saying today because here's my fundamental issue with retiring early and making money fast and to be rich. Like I mentioned in the beginning, the definition of success for a lot of people in the US might not identify with your definition of success. I could really care less about having a big ass house with a perfect suburban life. Maybe I'm young, maybe I'm 19, but I just don't see myself wanting that right now. And I know I might want that in the future. And that's why I am still taking steps to have a financial future. But I think there's this balance where I'm struggling to answer this question, which is how much should you sacrifice in the present moment to have a better long-term future before you get depressed in your day-to-day -day life? I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna be honest. I find a lot of joy in spending my $5 coffee going to a coffee shop and working because I'm an artist and I like to get inspired by things in the real world. Does it make sense? Does Graham stuff in and all these financial advisors think it's stupid? Yes, but I don't operate in a rational way. Another example is I could grow my business and spend all the money I do in marketing to Facebook and Instagram ads, but I'd rather spend all that money on people, my editors, and the people that work at my company. Fundamentally, it makes more sense to spend that money on Facebook and Instagram to promote my business so it can get more sales, but I'd rather spend that money on making content for you guys to pay my editors and like, I just like working with people. I could be making more, but I choose to spend money on things that give Give me more fulfillment. Sometimes it will contradict where what you want will not make sense for what's the most rational or the best investment, but I don't necessarily think we're meant to operate that way. Like if I was rational, I would not drop out of school. If I was rational, I would not start a YouTube channel. If I was rational, I would not make a whole financial video while hanging up pictures in my room because that would be distracting. But I like art. I like things that are a little bit different. I am not going to comply to what society defines as success in order just to be more secure myself. I like the challenge and not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring me. And I chose this life to be an entrepreneur, to do these things, so I should honor it. And I think with buying the house and having less debt while making sure you're diversifying your income, I think it's all great and dandy, but I think it's also important to ask yourself, like, what do I want to do today? And it's not about this black and white spectrum of like, I'm either going to spend all this money today or save and pinch for pennies so we can have a great future. Like, I think there's a middle. And for me, it might take longer to get the house I want so I can spend more money on on the day-to-day -day things that make me happy and that's okay and there's no path to success like there is no one route so for anyone that's feeling pressure to make money at a certain time or get a job at a certain age fuck that because because you just have to at the end of the day ask yourself what you want thank you guys for watching i hope you guys like my new art wall oh i hope this video was at all helpful i know i'm so contradictory but i think it's important to figure out your future but also just fucking enjoy your life and do what you want to do thank you for watching today's video shout out to the comment winner shout out to the comment winner comment on this post to be featured in the next episode if you guys want to be the next comment winner just comment on today's video i'll see you in the next one peace